for number four, it says kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Where does your skater have the greatest kinetic energy on your track? Um, in addition, mark this on your picture. We'll talk about that. Um, and there may be more than one place, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Uh, let's see. Joshua, let's start with you. So uh, where did your skater have the highest kinetic energy as they're going up and down their track? Yes, the highest kinetic energy is at the bottom. And if you look at the chart here, you can see that when they get to the bottom, that's where their kinetic energy is going to be the largest, is when they get to the very bottom of the motion. Okay? So that's the first thing I wanted you to see is um, number four there. Again, where is the kinetic energy the largest? Um, and then you would calculate that for uh, number five. So one half mv squared for the kinetic energy. It's pretty straightforward to find. Uh, the mass was 60, and I think the, the value you should have gotten is close to 10 for the velocity. Uh, some of you had like 9.9 .9 or 10.1. It just depends on where exactly your person was. Um, but you should get around that for the velocity. And when you calculate it out, should get somewhere around 3,000. Now, you might have not gotten this value exactly, and that's okay, but you should get around 3,000 there. Okay, then I wanted you to calculate the work. So work is equal to force times distance. The force you're having to apply is the force of gravity because you're working against gravity to lift your skater. So that's 60 times 9.8. Okay, and that gives you 588. That is the force that you're applying. And the distance is you lifted your skater five meters. And that gives me 2,940 joules. Okay, then number seven, we said potential energy is the stored energy because of its position. Um, so, Erica, where is it that the potential energy is the highest for your skater? Like, right on the side, like right there. Yes, at the highest point on the sides, right? Your potential energy is going to be the highest um, on the sides of the motion. Wherever the highest point is, that's where your potential energy is going to be the highest. Because it's stored energy, and so that's where it stores the most. Um, and so then I wanted you to calculate the potential energy. Um, so potential energy is MGH. So the mass of your skater is 60. G is 9.8. And the height was 5. So when you calculate that out, you get 2,940. So here's the first big thing I want to point out and show you is... This value at the bottom, this value to do work, and this value here for potential are all pretty much the same. They're not identically the same only because this is hard to get an exact value for. No. Come on, self. This is hard to get an exact value for. But these numbers are all very, very close to each other, and that is what they should be. They should all be almost the same value, if not exactly the same value. Uh, and the reason for that is because all of this energy is coming from the same place. We do work on the skater to lift them up onto the track. So we do work on the skater to lift them up and put them on the track in the first place. Okay. Then, once I've done that work, they have potential stored energy at that point. Then, they turn that potential energy into kinetic and then it goes back and forth and uh, back again. Okay, so number nine, what do we notice about the uh, kinetic energy? Or sorry, what do we notice about the total energy? Rhea, what do you notice about the total energy that the skater has? Yes, the total energy never changes. It's the same value the whole time. And that's because it comes from the work you did. And that means that the amount of work you did is going to be some value, and it can't be any more or less than what you started with. 
So then what you'll see is that your kinetic and your potential energies kind of oscillate back and forth from each other. Um, as one goes down, the other will go up. Um, and this is something that it brings up in number 12, which is conservation of energy. The energy can change forms, but it can't be destroyed. It's the same value the whole time, the total energy, but the individual values will change. And that's this idea um, of energy conservation. Okay, a lot of this stuff on the back, um, I'm going to leave to you. It's important to know um, things about like uh, that if you start your point at different, if you start your skater at different points, that's going to change. Um, that's going to change how much potential energy you would have. So if I start it lower, I have a less potential energy, um, and that means I won't go as fast at the bottom. Uh, if you adjust the height, that's going to change the values for the total energy and the kinetic and potential. But notice the motion doesn't change. Okay, It made my potential be negative, but my kinetic value isn't any different. But my total energy value will change depending on what that is. So we'll talk more about what this adjusting the height thing does um, a little bit later. You can change the mass. And if you change the mass, that'll change a little bit what happens at the bottom. And you notice it changes the energy and the energy's got bigger. Um, you can adjust gravity. That's also going to adjust what happens as far as your stored energy and that sort of thing goes. So there's a lot of little things. Um, that I wanted to make sure uh, you know when you're going forward. But the last big thing I want to look at here is number um, 17, this idea about total energy. Um, so if you turn on friction, eventually the skater is going to stop. But we just said that total energy can't change, okay? The idea of conservation of energy is total energy can't change. So what happens? Where does this energy go if it can't be destroyed? So it can't just disappear. We can't just magically stop. Um, so what's happening to it? Where is it going? Uh, Matthew Palmer, what do you think? Where do you think this energy is going? Yes, so let's talk about what thermal energy is because I don't want to call it thermal energy because that's kind of confusing. Um, instead, we're going to call it work done by friction. So we said there's two types of work. There's work done against a force and there's work done to change speed. This is work done to change speed. And so the energy doesn't disappear. It turns into work that friction does. The reason why there was no work done by friction before is because it was frictionless. There was no friction, so friction did no work. The object just kept going. When there's friction in a problem, it does work, and that causes the speed to change um, more than just what the uh, conservation of energy will dictate. Okay? Okay. And then the last one here that I want to talk about is number 19. So, Owen, we said that uh, for number 12, so energy can't be created or destroyed. But the question is, when you start your skater at the beginning, they have no energy. So if I start them here, they have no energy at this point. So if they have no energy, where does the energy to move come from? Owen, what do you think? So that's a good start. Yep, gravity is certainly going to do something, and that's why it's going to keep moving. But gravity doesn't give it its first energy at the beginning. It comes from something else. Good start. Good start. Emma, what do you think? Where does the energy come from? You're talking about like the motion as they go down the track? So that's the use of the energy, and that is important because we need to use the energy for it to be worth anything. Um, so that's going to be a use, but that's not the initial start of it. We're getting closer, though. We're getting there. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, Lexi Robinson, what about you? Where do you think the energy is coming from for them to get started in the lab? Anyone got an idea? This is a tricky one. Something has to happen first. This. Ready? This one blow your mind. Whoop. Watch the energy. Whoop. I know. It's amazing. Where does this energy come from? It comes from work. I want you to see it is really important to connect these three things together. Work, potential energy, and kinetic energy. See, what happens is you do work to give it potential energy. And then the potential energy that it has turns into kinetic energy. And then it repeats the pattern. And eventually, friction will do work again to stop it. And that's what I wanted you to see kind of as this overall idea with energy. Okay, question. Terrific. I woke up and then people came to my classroom. It's nice. All right. I want you to submit the lab if you have not done so already.